What does it mean to be a Kadiwa? I mean, yes, we're the unmarried members in the church. But there's more to it than our marital status and our age. Hi, I'm Isabel Alfonso. Hi, I'm John Guillermo. My name is Sofia Trigones. I'm Brother RJ Morales. My name is Mary Beth Mendoza. Hi, I'm Melody. I'm from the UK. I am currently a insurance agent. And I am recently graduated from the University of Essex. So do I do photography? I like to kind of travel sometimes and I love spending time with my family. Kadiwa are the unmarried members who are 18 years of age and above. On their way to becoming, preparing themselves for the life of a book lord. Kadiwa, the organization itself, is a fortress. And the Kadiwas, the members, are my comrades in the battle we call life. You make sure that even the social settings that you put yourself in follow the guidelines that we have within the church. When will my life finally all start to fall into place and fall together? I find myself still transitioning between Binhi and Kadiwa, even though I'm already 18. Um, probably losing your faith. I think that's really the biggest struggle Kadiwa's face today. Looking the right way, you know, speaking the right way, doing the right thing. I think one of the main concerns is like, am I going to spend the rest of my life alone? It's always something that can tempt you to go astray. Kadiwa, or Kapataang Madiwang Wagas, means youth with noble intent. Now, don't get caught up on the word youth. That just means that at this stage in our lives, we're not responsible to raise children or work with the spouse to maintain a marriage. Let's focus more on that second part, having noble intent. Well, noble is defined as having or showing fine personal quality or high moral principle and ideals. And intent can also mean purpose, intent. You get my point. So it means unmarried individual with the intent of living by the highest moral standard, which no matter where you are in life, can be a struggle, but more importantly, it can be rewarding. So what does living with noble intent look like when you're dealing with peer pressure and trying to find out who you are? How can a young adult stay true to what God wants him or her to be? Fitting in is the feeling of being accepted within society. Nobody really wants to stand out. You kind of have to alter a little bit of yourself in order to fit in with the crew. If we are able to fit in, we will feel the belongingness and acceptance from others. That's very important amongst the youth nowadays to feel accepted by everyone. As I first started working, I became really, you know, it, uh, involved in this community and obviously if, if I'm working with these people to make a livelihood I want to fit in with them. That's one of the most shocking times or the most times that I was most face to face with the people of this world. I told them I was Christian, or even my manager knew because obviously she hired me and it's a complete shock. I just refused to have a beer and uh, I was told oh you know it, uh, don't be shy. It says a lot about how people are used to religious people sort of forsaking uh, you know their religion in, in times like that and I had to be quite adamant about not taking a drink. But then, you know, after refusing, I've become proud that I was managed to, you know, hold my ground against something like that. Every time I remember that I'm a part of the Kadiba organization, even though I may be doing various things, I actually have a set of, you know, firm beliefs that I always stand by to fall back on. As a Kadiba member, I know that I'm different because I belong to a bigger family that shares the firm beliefs that I do. And I know that there's a community that I don't just belong to, but I love. Kadiwa, of course, they were going to talk about love. Finding the one becomes more challenging to me because... Most people look for relationships during, um, mostly in social media. Finding someone who has the same set of... Values. Beliefs. Morals as I do. Outlook in life. Compatibility. <laughs> Having a tight work schedule and limited time for social gatherings. People, they just look at profile pictures. It's talking to them. Um, you don't know if they're interested. Sometimes you're scared. They just go by the physical physique instead of getting to know the person. Not many people are here in Calgary, so it's hard. <laughs> 
Well, in relation to finding the one, noble intent is probably the most important aspect of doing that. If noble intention wasn't part of my whole value set as I view relationships, I think that I would be a different person. I don't think I would have raised my standards to carry those values. Definitely having noble intention is a great factor in how I respect sisters. And I've also seen the other side through personal experience with my own sister. I've seen her go through her heartache. Of course, I care for my sister, and it translated to how I wouldn't want that for any other sister out there that's part of the church, or any woman for that matter. I feel that if you have noble intent, you'll draw closer to God and bring Him into your plans. He's the one that has the ultimate plan. So the key factor to keep in mind here is to really make sure you're appreciating where you're at now. Really focusing on yourself to make sure that you are that person that's going to be right for the one that our Almighty God will bless you in your life with. Including God in my plans and making sure I have my devotional prayer to be the best person I can be. That all spurs from self-awareness and making sure you learn from your past, but most especially pure intent. I know that it might sound easy for me to just say, hey, be patient, trust in God, but I think I can kind of bring it back to our roots when it comes to what we've learned in the worship service, which is faith without works is useless. So even though you might be further on in life, you may have the faith to have the patience, but don't be afraid to go out there and do the works, you know? There are many Kadiwas out there that are ready to be your wingman or your wingwoman. And I think once you try and put yourself out there, I feel in God's timing and your trust and patience in Him, all that would pay off because you never know who you'll come across when you're out there going to different activities, joining the Kadiwa meetings. It's really amazing how God works, and He works in wonderful ways. There are actually many definitions of success. Success in this world is when you find the job that you want. A dream that you have wanted to achieve. Making good money. Success to me is when I made my parents proud. Is that you always be able to attend the worship service. Success is where our faith is. Being able to make him happy will make me happy. And I think that's what success is. <laughs> The biggest lesson I've learned about success is it's not going to come in the way you expect it. So how did you picture success growing up? I guess it was growing up, going to college, getting married, and having kids. I mean, that's the basics. Basically, that was it, being successful in that. I actually ended up quitting um, the job that I was at for about 14 years because it was getting a little um, overwhelming. My priorities was actually being a Katiwa officer. Well, I'm going to college and the occupation that I was looking for, it would actually take up more of my time than I wanted to. I was working weekends. I ended up um, being promoted and having more responsibility. I ended up applying for a few months. An interview that was going on for a while, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna get it. And so I just applied somewhere else. And that was the week that I'm like, well, I'll just like, decided to go to the San Jose Chapel and go there every night and really pray about it. And then that Friday, I ended up getting two job offers. That's when I kind of felt like I was able to um, have that success and still be able to um, attend worship service and everything. Uh, right now, everybody is trying to claw their way to the top, fight their way and step on people to get to where they're at in their lives. And um, I think having noble intent is definitely not being that way. And working hard and being true to yourself, but and also helping others around you as well to be successful with you. And I've seen that personally with other people, um, people doing things they're probably not supposed to be doing to be promoted or whatever. Choosing Kadiwa over my career gave me different perspective, kind of gave me more realistic thoughts of how a job or a career should be in terms of like if it fits into your spiritual duties, it kind of made my re expectations realistic. Even without your parents, like when you're away from them, being able to still be a strong member in the church, um, I know that's hard. I've seen that being hard for a lot of people, but being a successful Kadiwa is doing that on your own, maturing in your faith, continuing to do that, and also um, trying to be mature um, growing up as a person as well.
I want to, I think I want to be known for being a strong member in the church more than for being a creative operations manager. Having spiritual success is going to definitely matter more in the end. So as we've seen, being a Kadiwa isn't just a label of our status in life. It really is a barometer or measuring stick. It's practicing self-control and discipline when no one is watching and still moving forward spiritually. The definition of what it means to be a Kadiwa gives a standard for us to live by. You're probably thinking, that doesn't sound easy at all. God's standards are high, the highest. But coming from someone who didn't get introduced into the church until well into her 20s, I can tell you, having that standard, that guide has made my life simple and given my life purpose. I was always prayerful and, um, you know, I was raised to be um, fearing of God. I had a sense of God, but it wasn't, at that age, I was very curious to do my own thing. It never, it never really happened the way I wanted it to happen. And a lot of the time, I would make decisions based on what other people would say or their own experiences. And then sometimes it, it, never, it didn't work out. If it didn't work out the way I uh, wanted it to, I would get upset. <laughs> I would get upset and I would like feel frustrated. When it comes to finding the one, I used to go after what I wanted. And when it comes to this area, it's hard. <laughs> Being patient, that I'm very ambitious. Um, I'm a go-getter, but I had to really humble myself and sit back and let God work. Yeah, I might think this person is attractive, but what's this, again, what's their faith life like? This is something that I had to build over time um, because it didn't happen overnight. If you're not a member of the church, if you're not grounded in that, I can't, I'm good. Temptation is, is always there. You know, just again, being in control of my emotions and really just waiting. God knows any everything. So it's like everything that I want in a person, God is going to fulfill for me. Yes, I need to say exactly what I want, but eventually it's going to be what's best for me. Nowadays, I'm like really focused on prayer. For me, prayer is like the thing that I rely on. Because I've seen so many great things come from really being a member of this church and believing and trusting in God. Now that I'm a member of the church, that noble intent for me is submitting to the will of God. And being a member, I feel like God is with me, that what I'm doing is enough. Living on purpose, living because of a particular purpose, especially with the words of God. I really just know that in my heart, what I'm doing is for God. It has taught me a lot about patience. Although we're one organization, we're all, we're all different. We all have different personalities. It helped me to be a lot more personable, more understanding, you know, more, more loving towards you know, people in general. What about for the older Kadivas who feel like they've already time as, as Kadiva? Um, like, oh, I already put in my time. Honestly, there are days I feel that way too. <laughs> but then, you know, I'm so thankful that I, you know, um, I have my duty in the church. So that keeps me, give me the strength. But don't give up. You can always reach out to other brethren, um, other Kadiwas out there, and they can help you out. Of course, the right decision to make isn't always the easiest, but there are other officers to guide us, there are our parents. They lead us in the way of being noble. I do have my work life, I do have church life, but to me, I try to integrate it as much as possible, so it's, my life is cohesive. Like, to me, it felt like it gave me a lot more purpose, and it made me a lot more happier.